Welcome to Web Handling. I am super excited to continue Dave's Defect with a discussion of cutting and slitting troubles such as flared or cracked edges or dust. These defects teach us that even the smallest of converting elements, such as a razor blade, can cause huge problems for you and your customer. Attention to details will be most important for trouble-free cutting. I know your time is precious, so let's get started. Most webs are cut at least once, if not many times, prior to reaching the end-use customer. This cutting operation is caused for many complaints on a wide variety of products, including paper, film, foil, non-wovens, textiles, tissue, and more. As we've learned in this class, there is no single root cause. For this defect, there's not even a single mechanics other than somehow the edge of the web is distorted during the cutting, die cutting, sawing, or slitting process. However, if there were one factor, it would be that dull blades are common contributors to cutting problems. In the next few slides, we will merely outline some important cutting issues and then guide you to important resources where you can learn more. There are three goals that almost any cutting operation must satisfy. First, you must cut the web completely, which is a given for most of the cutting methods. Second, you must cut the web cleanly, where a quality measure is very material and customer dependent. Finally, you must cut the web reliably, such as measured by mean time between service, as the industrial engineers would call it, or hours between blade changes, as an operator might call it. It is easy to foresee cutting challenges, even though they are very application and web dependent. These include abrasive, brittle, bulky, or gummy webs. These include high speeds or narrow webs. These include other operational concerns, such as blade changes and safety. There are many cutting options, and all, including razors, are exceedingly complicated. Thus, what we know is an empirical science at best, or commonly a craft, that is learned from billions of blades in service. Shear is the most common, as well as the best documented. You can find a hundred articles on that slitting method, as well as take a one or two day course in it. Many of the niche slitting options have few, if any, peer-reviewed publications, so it is very much a cut and try operation based on plant or supplier experience. If you take the time to go to school, you will learn many best practices for cutting, especially shear slitting, such as a few that are listed here. If you type in slit into the master search box in the Roysom Library, you will find almost 300 articles, columns, conference papers, and the like. Far too many to efficiently learn about the subject. An exception may be the slitting chapter of the must-have Ultimate Role in Web Troubleshooting Guide by Tappy Press. Instead, for most of us, the best way to begin is to literally go to school. The good news is that there are some really great online training resources. If you need only a couple hours, then my Module 12 of my award-winning and trademarked Web 101 school that has been taken by 5,000 people would be best for you. 
especially since you will also learn other must-know topics such as rollers and tension and nip control and guiding and winding and more. If you want to take a deep dive into slitting, David Rumson's Web Slitting Technology course is definitely the way to go. Thank you so very much for joining me in this Defect Solving and Defect Preventing series. Stay tuned for the next clip where we will discuss gauge bands and the great amount of trouble they cause. If you found anything interesting or useful here, please like and share and subscribe. Also, please consider supporting the work of this channel using the Patreon link below. See you next time.